Hello and welcome. Today we're making garlic bread, and the best way to make garlic bread is making compound butter. This is just a butter that has herbs and stuff mixed in and is marinated, so to speak, for a little bit. We even have cook times for both air fryer and the oven. I apologize for the lack of uploads recently. A uh, medical issue kept me from being able to stay on my feet for filming, so I'm working on things to improve this a little bit. So thank you for your patience with that. So let's look at what we need for the recipe today. For this, I will be using a normal store-bought French bread, four tablespoons of butter or butter substitute. Do not use margarine, its water content is way too high for this. One teaspoon garlic powder, half teaspoon salt, half teaspoon pepper, one half teaspoon dried parsley, and one half teaspoon oregano. Dried. If you want to use fresh on the herbs, just use one to two teaspoons instead because they're a little less potent than the dried. Step one, let your four tablespoons of butter or vegan spread come up to room temperature. You want it nice and soft since you'll be mixing all your spices in and letting it marinate after that. Once your spread is about room temperature, you want to mix in your herbs and spices and you're going to want to let the butter mixture sit for about 30 to 60 minutes. The one herb version has a bit more potent flavors from the herbs, but the garlic is pretty much about the same after a half an hour. Times over an hour really did not have any noticeable difference in the flavors unless you're using a cultured, unpasteurized butter. If somehow you actually have that, it's best after 48 hours in the refrigerator. Once your spread is almost ready, we want to cut the bread. I like to do the garlic bread on a tray for two reasons. One, just in case something drips and I don't want it to be in the oven. And the second, because it preserves the chewiness of French breads by not letting the bottom get exposed to direct heat and becoming crispy. From there, it's just cut it to fit your pans. In my case, in half and then in half again. So, the nice part about making compound butter, besides the flavoring, is that spreading room temperature butter is one of the easiest things you will ever do in a kitchen. If you have got a rubber spatula like mine, it's even super simple to get nice even coverage on your bread. I like to go all the way to the outside of the edge, which is also, again, why the tray is there. Once buttered, it's into the air fryer or oven, depending on your equipment or needs at the time. And now we will look at both the pros and cons of both methods and suggested cooking times. And we'll start with the air fryer as it is the simplest. If you're enjoying this video, don't forget to subscribe for more like it, and of course, cat pictures. And if you'd like to help me and the fuzzy friends out, share the video with someone you know who might like it. So, if you have an air fryer, I would honestly never make garlic bread in the regular oven again. Just never. The ease of getting amazingly even browning are pretty much made this the only way I will make garlic bread now. Depending on your fryer, you may need to add a remove a minute though for the cooking times. That would be accounting for the airflow of your air fryer versus mine has a very open airflow. With that said, let's look at our times and appearance difference. So I tested quite a few times and temperatures and I came out to just about seven minutes for a nice even golden looking garlic bread like you see here. This is pretty much the restaurant standard of browning and makes for the best starting time to use when testing for any needed change to the cook time as it's just adding or dropping a minute depending on your desired browning level. And now let's look at my preferred level of browning. I like my garlic bread just a bit more browned. This is eight minutes in my air fryer. As you can see, I let it get a little bit more browned, almost to the point of starting to burn. Now, the reason I say to start your first batch at seven minutes instead of eight, like this batch, is as you can guess from these images, going a minute over this would probably result in burnt to the point of being inedible. So now let's look at our oven instructions. So, as mentioned above, while we can produce good garlic bread in about the same amount of time in a regular oven, the browning will either be uneven or it will take a bit more work and time. More about that in a moment. We'll also be using the broiler setting at 400 degrees for both recipes, and the second rack from the top also in both recipes. I'll explain the rack position also in a moment. For the results that look like this, we have a nice easy setup. For this, you only need to pop it in a preheated oven, and after about 8 minutes you're done. It's not bad results at all, really. It's the two things I was unsatisfied with were the uneven browning in the appearance and the center bowing downwards very slightly. The bowing comes from the uneven distribution of heat in the oven, causing the liquid butter to pool and that butter pooling slowly moving inwards as the bread cooks, causing more weight and moisture to be in the center so it falls ever so slightly inward. The uneven browning also comes from the same thing. So, let's look at the even golden browning with no center dip, and wow, I'll never make it this way again. So the only way to get an even browning in an oven with uneven heat zones is you have to rotate it, possibly multiple times. And the only way to prevent the pooling that causes the dip is by heating it more evenly so that the you get more uniform evaporation. 
So the question of course becomes, how long and how many turns? Rotating every two minutes by 90 degrees and repeat until your desired browning. The opening of the door evens the heat by dumping it most of it outside your oven. This slows the cooking, obviously, and causes a more even browning with no bowing. This took 11 and a half minutes, turning it 2 minutes, 4 minutes, 6 minutes, 8 minutes, and 10 minutes, and was in no way, shape, or form worth the effort. It wastes both your time and uses your oven in probably the most inefficient way possible. It did, on the other hand, get nice even browning. So, why 400 degrees and rack second from the top? The temperature is to allow the moisture to evaporate a bit slower, so it's easier to catch the amount of browning you want, and it lowers the risk of burning if you forget about it for a minute or so. The second rack helps alleviate the uneven heating you get in most ovens. Broil elements have a lot more surface area than the bake element due to the higher temperatures needed there. This is going to cause heat spots wherever the elements get close to one another, like you see here in this picture. By adding a bit of distance, you even that heat out significantly. And with that, we have made garlic bread. And I've probably bored you to sleep going on and on about oven settings and things. So, as always, thank you all for watching, and I hope you have a great day and a great meal.